Good morning everybody and welcome to today's assembly. This morning we're going to be talking about why are some toys more popular than others? Back to that in a minute. Now I've not really any news for you this morning other than I'm sure that some of you may have heard that there are potential plans to reopen schools in June for some children. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but can I please ask you to remind your parents to keep checking their dojo and their texts and also to check the website so that they're really up to date with our most up to date information. Thank you. OK, so why are some toys more popular than others? I really have no idea of the answer to that question and I'm going to hand over to Miss Phelan in a minute. But just to say, what were my best toys when I was younger? To be honest, I can only remember two cuddly toys. The most important one to me was a big rag doll. But then there was another that was a huge, great big lion, the size of a real life Labrador that used to lie on my bed. And I have many, many memories of running to my bedroom when I was feeling sad and cuddling the life out of that lion. Why was that the most popular to me? Just because he listened when I was there crying or when I was sad or maybe even when I was happy. But I think I liked to hug things rather than to play with things. Um, although for some of you, that will be a very different experience. I'm going to hand over to Miss Phelan now, who is going to find some answers to this question back at school. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Tafali. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about toys, why we love them so much. I want you to have a look at this picture here. This comes from a vase that was dated 500 BC. What can you see the person doing in this picture? That's right, they're playing. And here we have a yo-yo, just like that lady was playing with. But this is a modern day yo-yo. And we have evidence of people having toys all the way back to ancient Greece. So let's look at some examples. Do you like action heroes? Maybe this is what you're used to now. This is what people would have used a long time ago. So even thousands of years ago, people played with action heroes. How about this? Look at these little creatures. Have you ever played with something like this? Can you see the uh, resemblance? Now, everybody has favorite toys. And I'm gonna show you my favorite toy. This dolly was called Tiny Tears. And Tiny Tears was my favorite toy ever. And the reason I love Tiny Tears it's because when you held her and you could feed her with a bottle and the milk or water, whatever you fed her, went in her mouth, but then it came out as a wee. Now, let's find out what some uh, children and adults at Park Primary love to play with. And this is Morning BBC News for Kids. And today we will talk about toys. There's one guest who wants to talk about their favourite toys. Please come in in studio. Hello? Hello. My first question is, what is your favourite toy? My favourite toys are Lego, Live Game, Electric Robot, Magnetic Play Blocks and Bunch of Mums. For those who don't know what is Bunch of Mums, Bunch of Mums is a little coloured plastic balls that stick to each other like Lego. My second question is, why are those toys especially favourite? because they make me happy but they also give me creativity hello everyone it's miss massey here when i was little um my twin brother and i used to play with our train set all the time and as you can see oops turning a corner it's still whoops derailed it's still one of my favorite things to do what was your favorite toy when you were a kid when I was a child, I loved playing with Polly Pockets. They are tiny dolls into small houses. 
I used to collect little trolls that you found at the bottom of Weeto's packets. So I used to eat my cereal and then collect the little trolls. They were my favourite. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. So probably my favourite toy isn't really a toy, but it's an animal and it's my cat Oreo. This is Moot. He's a little monkey and back in the day people used to collect T.Y. Beanie Babies and I had loads and loads, but this was my favourite. It was very special, very precious. We used to do monkey wrestling. This one won um, the Royal Rumble in 1999. Uh, when I was little, well, like when I was baby, baby, like zero, zero, uh, uh, I like um, In the Night Garden, and then my favourite character is Eagle Figgle. My favourite toy when I was little was a dolly, and my little dolly was called Rosie, and I used to carry her everywhere. So, does your owner take care of you very well? She takes care of me very well. She even put, she even... Um, puts me to sleep, she hugs me, she takes me everywhere where she goes, downstairs, upstairs. Okay, well that sounds like a very nice owner. Alright, so this is my Tamagotchi. When I first got this, it was just an egg, so it's just a pulsating egg on the screen. And you have to wait for it to hatch. When it hatches out, it is ferociously hungry. So what was your favourite toy when you were younger? Well, Mary, it was a dolly called Tony. Um, and she was made of plastic um, <laughs> and she had uh, nylon brown hair, which I used to brush. Um, and it was in a style called a mullet, uh, which was a hairstyle that was very big in the 1980s. <laughs> I loved her very much and I kept her in my bedroom. So her name was Tony. Yeah. It, and it was a girl. Yeah, weirdly. I think it was probably <laughs> Antonia. Ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Over and out. What a great question. We know lots of toys become really popular and sometimes even more popular than others for a while. Things like Tamagotchi, Pokemon cards, Pogs. Come on grown-ups, you must remember Pogs. So why do some toys become more popular than others? Well let's think. Some toys are really great for sharing and playing with other people. There are some toys that are fantastic for our imaginative play. Other toys? Well, let's see. Other toys, they're things that we like to collect, like Pokemon cards. And then some toys can just go viral for no reason at all. They're really, really simple. They don't have to be anything fancy. So, for example, how about Sporky? Or one of my favourite. Sometimes I like to play. Oh. So, why don't you talk to your family this weekend about what their favourite toys were growing up? Back to you, Mrs Tafali. Thanks, Miss Phelan. Now, today I'd have liked to share a story about a treasured toy. And that story is Dogger by Shirley Hughes. But unfortunately, I've left it in school. So the plan is I'm going to read that and we will display that story on Park Reads if that's okay. But today I am going to share a story which is called The Forgotten Treasure. Now the reason I'm sharing this story is because we've been talking about personal treasures. So I thought I'd give this one a go. Once upon a time, there lived a poor shepherd who looked after a small flock of sheep. He lived in a tiny cottage with his wife and family. Every day he walked with his sheep over the hills, helping them to find fresh grass to eat. One day, as they were crossing a hill, the shepherd saw a tiny blue flower. He'd never seen one quite like it before. Carefully, he picked it up and smelt it. Then he tied it to his shepherd's crook and called his sheep to him. He had decided to take this pretty blue flower back with him to give to his wife. She was sure to be pleased. Suddenly, a small green man sprang out from behind a tree. It's your lucky day, he said. You've found a real treasure. 
Take that flower and touch the rock on yonder hillside. The rock will open up and all the treasure you find there will be yours. But do not forget the best treasure of all. And with that, the little man disappeared. The shepherd stood for a moment, wondering what to do. Had he been dreaming? There was only one way to find out. He walked up to the rock with his small blue flower and gently knocked. There was a great rumbling noise and the rock slowly cracked open. The shepherd peeped inside. There were steps in front of him which led down into the darkness. Taking a deep breath, the shepherd walked in and went carefully down. At first, he could not see anything. Then slowly, his eyes got used to the dark. There seemed to be heaps of things on the floor, sparkling and winking at him. Gold, silver, diamonds. The shepherd put the tiny blue flower down and, taking the old bag from his shoulder, scooped up as much treasure as he could. As he poured it into his bag, a tiny voice whispered in his ear, forget me not, forget me not. But all the shepherd could think of was the gold, the silver and the diamonds. When he had taken as much as he could carry, he hurried away back up the stairs, leaving the little blue flower behind. As soon as he was out in the open air, crash! The rock closed up again. He ran home as fast as he could, clutching his bag of treasures. Look what I found! He shouted as he came in. His family gathered round. You've never seen treasure like this! He panted as he opened the, the, the bag. But inside the bag, there was nothing, nothing but dust and ashes. What had gone wrong? Then he remembered what he had forgotten. The little blue flower. He raced back to the rock, but it was closed. Dry as he might, he could find no way in. Then faintly he heard, Forget me not, forget me not. The shepherd then realised he had forgotten the greatest treasure of all. Now I know that seems like a tenuous link with our theme today about favourite toys, but I really just wanted you to have a little think about what does it mean to you to treasure something? And the other thing is, if you treasure something, does it have to be valuable? I think my final thought would be, what's your most treasured toy or maybe possession and why? Now, let's see our home learning. Once again, we've had lots of lovely things to, to share with you. It's been brilliant to have so many of you joining your live lessons and discussions. Please keep it up. So, let's see what you've been up to. I actually grew some ginger. Amazing, isn't it? Right there. This is my, the long one is my mom's. And the, the tiny one right here is my, is my own. And it's so beautiful, you can see. And yesterday I just found out it also has grown roots. Amazing, isn't it?
salto, salto. Ando, ando, ando. Corro, corro, corro. Bailo, bailo, bailo. If you could have one wish, what would it be, it, Mum? It would be for you to have a bakery. Good morning everyone! I thought I'd pop along to surprise you in assembly today and I've brought my friend along with me. I'd like you to meet Ted Toes. He was my teddy from when I was a little girl. And actually, just like Mrs. Tafali, I didn't really play with toys as such when I was younger. I much preferred to give my teddy a cuddle and to read stories to him. Anyway, he's going to just sit and join me as I tell you who our stars of the week are this week. And so, our first star of the week this week is from Marco Polo class. It's Zohan. Zohan, we're really proud of you for being a concentrating crocodile during your class Google Meet sessions and waiting so patiently for your turn. It's really hard to do that sometimes, isn't it? When all your friends have got lots of things to say, you have to sit and wait until it's your go. Well done. We're really, really proud of you. Our next star of the week comes from Pankhurst class this week. And it's Hannah Patel. Hannah, you've been so diligent in completing and returning your home learning to your teachers over the last few weeks. Really great effort. And again, we're very, very proud of you. Our next star of the week comes from Degama class, right down in reception. Anya, your, your star of the week from Mrs Tafali's beautiful gift of all the numbers that you know and you're super counting. And your writing that you've been doing at home. We're really glad that you've enjoyed the books and we're really, really happy to see all that hard work that you've been doing. Well done. Our next star this week comes from Einstein class. Rayhan, your star of the week for your participation in Google Meets lessons, where you've articulately shared your home learning along with your understanding of the current events. Rayhan, you've also impressed Miss Roll by being able to hold a mature conversation whilst you're on the phone. It's quite tricky, isn't it, talking to your teachers on the phone? Definitely not the same as when you're in the classroom. So well done, Rayhan. That's really lovely to hear. Our next star of the week comes from Attenborough class. And it goes to Lucas. Lucas, your star of the week for sharing all your amazing work that you've been doing at home. You submit your work every day to Miss Chandraja and it's clear that you've been doing what Miss Chandraja's been sharing with you and your own work as well. Excellent work, Lucas. Well done. Alice in Marie Curie class, you're our next star of the week. Your star of the week for your enthusiasm towards your home learning and for creating some beautiful pieces of work which you have shared on Google Classroom. Well done, Alice. Great work. Our next star of the week comes from year six up in Mandela. And it's Iwana F. 
Iwana, your star of the week, your wonderfully caring manner during your phone calls and during Google Meet. It's a pleasure to speak to you every time, says your teacher. Well done, Iwana. And now, star of the week goes to all the year six pupils who are getting up early for their nine o'clock lessons, especially those of you who are fasting and have different sleep patterns during Ramadan. We know it's really easy to stay in bed in the morning and not want to get up, but there's a good group of you who are making the effort to join in and to keep those routines going. Well done, thank you and keep it up. Our next star of the week is Fawzan in Pasteur class. Your star of the week for your amazing mathematical learning on numbers and times table rock stars. You've been super fast at solving problems and inspiring all your friends to do the same. Well done Fawzan. And key stage two, watch out. And now for our final stars of the week this week. We would like to say a huge well done, congratulations and thank you to all the staff who were involved in I'll Be There For You. With an extra special thank you and well done to Mr Walker for making it happen. Thank you all. The most important thing to remember for all of you guys at home is the message of the tune. We really are here for you. Well, that's it for our Stars of the Week and for our assembly this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you stay safe, keep looking after each other and continue being the amazing people that you are. We're so proud of you and we miss you, but we hope to see you very soon. Take care and see you next week. Bye.